So in this demo we'll show you how to invoke a web service with what you call a complex parameter from ADF Mobile. So this is a simple Java class that we expose as web service. It has one parameter of type AMP. AMP is actually just a Java class, so this is an object that we're passing to this method. And there's another parameter of a simple int type. Okay, And all we're doing here is basically just shooting out a message uh, when the web service is invoked. Web service is already deployed. We have the URL here. This is the location of the WSDL. We're going to copy it and use it in an ADF mobile application. So we're just going to go through the steps of creating an ADF mobile application. This is quite trivial. Um, in the meantime, I'll just explain that what we're going to see is that using the web service data control, you actually get a specific object that allows you to create um, the parameter in the right format. And we're going to use that parameter object in our page. Right, so we just created a simple page in our ADF mobile application. You can switch to the preview. This is how our page is going to look like. And next we're going to create the web service data control. Okay, so this is not different from the way that you would go about creating it in a regular ADF application, by the way. Give it a name, give the WSDL, click next, choose the methods you want to invoke. We're going to choose all three methods to be available and click finish. This is it. At this stage you can actually go and expand the data control palette and when you look in here you'll see that you have the three methods including the uh, method that adds an employee to a department and you can expand it to look at the parameters that this, mes uh, uh, this method accepts and you'll see the AMP parameter which is of type object and the other parameter of type integer. Now you can actually see here the object that was created for the parameter. Okay, so this is a parameter object of type map. We're going to drag and drop it into our page to create a form. This will allow us to insert values to the different fields that make up this object. We can do the same thing, by the way, with the integer parameter, but we're not going to do it right now. And next, we're going to take the actual method, drag and drop it into the page to create a simple button that will invoke this web service. So you can see there are two parameters that are needed. One of them is already populated, and it's populated with the value that is needed to access the object that you added to the page. For the other one, we're just putting in a fixed value of 20. And that's basically it. We now have our button. We can change the text on it. And the button takes the parameter object, pass it to the method, takes a fixed value, pass it as a second parameter, and that's how our application works. Now we can go and deploy it, switch again when you're creating a deployment port profile to the release mode. You can read my other blog about it. Um, this simply makes it faster and a smaller application at the end of the day on your device. Deploy it. And we're running right now from the Android emulator. Here's our application. We can click on it to invoke it. Let's move this window a little to the side. And then um, at the back end, we can actually look at the running web service over here um, and see the message appear when we invoke the service. Okay, so here comes our ADF mobile page. We are going to fill information in for the parameter. So it's an ID and a name and a salary for the employee. Those are going to populate the object. So ADF automatically creates the object at the back and passes it to the method when you press the button. Right. And when we click the invoke button, okay, we're calling the web service and if you look on the left at the log for the web service, you'll see the message coming from the methods in the web service, the value of the employee name, and the fixed salary. So the object was passed, we can access specific attributes in it inside the web service. Okay, and of course, if you bring up the mobile application again, you can change values. So let's just change the name because that's the one thing we see as the result of the web service. So instead of shy, let's have J. click invoke again and you'll see the message being thrown again 
web service has been invoked again, this time with a different value. So that's it.